Hey, this is StarCraft 2 History Part 27, and this covers a very specific two months in 2014. And these are two months you probably wouldn't have heard about if you're coming in for StarCraft 2 now, because it is probably the most overhyped and instantly ended a uh, hype train of all time in StarCraft 2 history. Well, I guess it's arguable with Scarlet or not, but th this is definitely way up there. So, in 2014, Actually, the story actually begins in Brood War, and I guess I'll put in some context. Basically, Flash was considered the greatest of all time in Brood War, and not only was he the greatest of all time in Brood War, he was such a player that they gave him the nickname God. Now, I don't know why he caught on as heavily as he did, for instance, if you actually go back and look through like community responses, I have a, I have a feeling that more people were fans of Jadong than they were of Flash. Flash was an incredible player. He deserved our respect. He was, by all rights, the greatest of all time. But he wasn't somebody that had insane amounts of popularity. I thought. And then when you go into StarCraft Two, uh, he was hugely popular. But the weird thing was nobody really watched his games. For Brood War, like they're, they're new StarCraft 2 fans. So it was really weird. Uh, it was just this really weird sort of following that Flash was around because the way people talked about him it was kind of clear they didn't watch his Brood War games, they didn't understand why he was the greatest of all time in Brood War and arguably the greatest of all time player, period, in any esport, possibly. So that's Flash. And basically, the narrative around Flash is very similar to the narrative around the elephant in the room. And like I said, that one was half right, half wrong. Right in the sense that the Kespa players were going to rise up. Wrong in the sense that it wasn't going to be the S rank player, S rank class players that people were hyping up like Jadong or Flash or Bisu or Stork. But Flash himself among those four is probably... Well, actually I think Jadong's 2013 is probably the best. But after that, Flash had some pretty good uh, peaks and moments. So he was like pretty good early on in 2013. He, in at the near the end of 2015, he had a brief spike in power with the um, with the mech shift, basically that made it Terran favorite in my opinion. And then you also have this period here in 2014. And 2014 was arguably his best period because for these two months he basically goes on an insane run from pro league through GSL and onwards. So, how do I explain this? Basically, uh, through Pro League and GSL, he goes 50 and 11 in maps, so 26-3 in series. In total, that means he's basically only lost to three different players. Maru, we all know Maru is a fucking uh, great Terran player. Action, now Action was just like a mediocre Zerg player. And Zest, Zest was at that time the best Protoss player. Like, we're still in the era of Zest, basically. So, everybody was straight up thinking this guy is going to be the uh, god. And he was very good at the time. It's even it's even possible he might have been the best Terran. I still would have favored Tasia personally, just because I favored the land results, basically. Because Flash was, like, getting a bunch of these in Pro League and GSL, so he hadn't had a tournament of victory. And then he goes, he goes to IEM Toronto, basically crushes... Well, he doesn't crush everybody. He does a shitload of work there. He om I'll go check real quickly, but I'm almost certain that like, he crushed everybody except the round of eight. Actually, wait. I think he might have met MC. Let me check real fast, because I remember it was like a very interesting sort. Yeah, basically what happens is he's in a group with Life, MC, and Scarlet. And he beats... Um, he loses to MC the first time around, beats Scarlet, and then beats MC the second time around. Goes on, almost loses to Snoot in the round of eight. And this is a very close series. Basically, Snoot had figured out, like, Flash, Flash had a potential weakness to all-in play, but he didn't. So he was able to go uh, up 2-0. Two, two oh, and then he didn't really switch, Snoot that is. Uh, I think he got into his own head, in a sense, and then he basically bailed out. Flash beats Tasia in TBT, and uh, Flash has always had Tasia's number in TBT the few times they've met. 
Uh, it's also Flash's, I think, his best matchup overall throughout StarCraft II history. It's the one closest to Brood War, if we're talking about matchup to matchup. And then he beats Zest in the finals. So everybody, everything was great. Everybody thought he was going to be the best player in the world. And then a lot of a lot of crazy like overhyped shit was coming on. Like he was going to revolutionize the game. He had solved the game. He was going to bring usher in a new great age of StarCraft II. And the reason I thought this was like crazy overhyped was because I actually thought all those things were true, but they weren't. They weren't attributable to Flash. They were attributable to. In my opinion, I thought Sue or was going to be the guy who was going to do it at the time, because this is a guy. I this guy was like I was like screaming, "This guy got three GSL finals. Why is nobody talking about him?" But then I was like, at the time, everybody was only talking about Flash. And the reason I'm talking about Sue now is because F- Sue is the guy who ends up killing this Flash hype train. Basically, what happens is Flash goes back to Korea after winning IE in Toronto and gets matched up with. True, Sue, and uh, DRG, I believe. Let me check. I might have been a third, different third player. No, yeah, it's definitely true. Okay. So basically what happens is this. is they meet, Sue and Flash meet up in the winner's matchup. And to understand what's going, about to happen is basically Flash is considered the best TVZ at this, at this particular moment by a lot of different people. And the reason is because he basically crushed solar and dark in the round of 32 with with his um overbearing macro and sue basically makes a mockery of flash and what i mean by mockery is that he lets flash play his style he even lets flash go up 30 drones on him basically like sue loses 30 drones to flash like early harassment or flash goes up a base and then sue still like fucking destroys flash in every possible way in the macro game so that's what i mean by a mockery is basically Sue was so far ahead, he could drop 30 and still crush Flash without even making it, without without even looking close. It was utterly dominant by Sue, an amazing sort of uh, victory. And then after that, Flash meets Dong Wei Gu, and then Dong Wei Gu basically outsmarts, out experiences, which is kind of a weird way to put it, I guess, because Flash has more experience. I guess outsmart might be the better way to put it. Basically, Dong Wei Gu outsmarts Flash, and then he realizes Flash makes a mistake in his uh, wall. So he kind of baits Flash into doing, a, into doing a drop and then sneaks his units in for a counterattack, basically destroying Flash in the process and moving on to the round of eight. And that's basically a very important part for... Not a very important part, but a very interesting episode, I guess, in the rise and fall of Flash from... 2014 to 2014 in StarCraft 2. One of the most overhyped players. And then later when he retires, one of the most underrated players. And I guess I'll go into this now because I'm not going to be doing another Flash video. But basically, it was like a gigantic, ba- um, gigantic, crazy backlash after he retires. Like, oh, you ruined your StarCraft 2, your, your Brood War legacy by playing StarCraft 2. Oh, why were you so shit in Brood War? I mean, in StarCraft 2. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Because everybody was like high praising Flash at the time, uh, in like 20, from like 2013 to 2015, as this like great, all time great player. And I was like, obviously, I wasn't one of them. I was like, this guy's good. Is not, this guy's good. Sometimes he's great, but he's not an all time great Terran player. But everybody else was. And then when he retires, it's like all of a sudden they remembered, oh, wait, he wasn't that great. Shit, he must have been terrible the whole time. And that's not true at all. Basically, Flash is one of those players that was simultaneously overrated and underrated at different points of his career. Like I said, I think Flash had pretty good moments. And as for Flash himself, I think he should have, if he could have, changed race to Protoss, because I think that would have fit his strengths as a player more. And after that, he kind of... he After he retires, basically, he's kind of like lost in the ether for a little bit, because... It looks like he's going about to join KT, but the KT's like, nah, we don't want you. And he basically decides to go back to Brood War, and Brood War is doing fucking great. You should uh, read the article about his 111, which is a revamped build order that I Love Oove, a uh, previous Terran Bonjois, created. And Flash has taken it and pushed it to its to its even higher level. So he's still doing fucking great in Brood War. And they're, even now, they're still trying to like stop Flash. Just the, not even just the players, just like the tournament itself is like creating maps to try to stop Flash, and they can't stop them yet. So, still, in Brood War, an untouchable, an untouchable sort of figure. 
the most important figure in my for my money if we're talking about brood war competition because he reaches the highest levels and if we're talking about him in the overall legacy of things i'd still prefer i i still think he has the strongest argument for greatest ever in any game just because he runs into jadong and brood war in its prime and beats them all and jadong for my money should have been would have been i guess the greatest of all time in brood war if flash didn't exist though it's contentious just because the two of them push each other so far, so much further than they should have. If without one, one without the others, you can't really imagine it. Anyway, this is about StarCraft 2 history. And as for Flash, I like I said, I think he had a lot of good things about him, a lot of bad things about him. Uh, I'll, I'll go over the bad, good things, bad things now. As a player, he was a lesser innovation in a sense, uh, a player who needed the Terran meta to go his way. And then from there, he had... He used a bunch, of, he used um, more of these standard strategies, and then executed better than a majority of Terrans, but not as good as somebody like, say, Innovation. Now, the problems with uh, Flash that were that were kind of strange was he didn't really understand series ordering or build order counters in StarCraft II as much as he did in the Brood War, and maybe it's just because StarCraft II is like way more severe about it, so he could just like straight up like inst insta win. Whereas like in Brood War, even even in like the most extreme version of build order wins like ZvZ, uh, somebody like Jadon could like break it break through with just pure skill. Whereas you can't do that in StarCraft Two, so maybe that's why he never really got it. And then he had these weird hiccups, like Innovation, strangely, where like you you would think he was about to make it, but then he does this like weird thing, this like bad decision at the rock and at the important like critical series and then like falls apart so uh flash was pretty good player uh at times a great player and somebody that should be remembered in starcraft 2 history but he would he he would be nowhere near close to my top greatest of all time list i'll put it that way still kicking ass in Rudor though all right that's it for this video see you guys later